Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to worship. We're delighted that you have chosen this Sunday morning to join us here in this virtual setting, and we pray that God's blessings will be upon each and every one of you as we gather for worship today. I want to thank uh, Pastor William for doing so much to help make this uh, possible for us to be able to come to you in this time uh, of isolation and also to Curtis Moore and to Diane Stanley for providing the music for us each and every week. So thank you all for what all of you are doing to help make this possible. Uh, today uh, at 11 o'clock, members of the uh, CHARGE Conference uh, have received a link to go into at 11 o'clock. We have a church business matter we need to take care of. And, all of you who have that link, I will see you at 11. It should be about a five minute meeting. Uh, we will be joined by our uh, uh, assistant administrative mm -hmm. assistant to the district superintendent, uh, Nancy Martinez, as she will uh, be uh, recording our meeting. Uh, so with that, uh, Pastor William, any announcements we need to make? Just a reminder uh, that the clergy will be outside, even though we have the charge conference at 11, we will be outside the um, uh, the Parker Chapel entrance at 1030 from 1030 to 1130. You can come by, uh, say hello. We'll give you a blessing. You stay in your car. Uh, you can also come by and pick up upper rooms, uh, drop to give off to the general fund or to bring bags or canned food for CUOC. We'll have people down at the Williams lobby entrance to collect all of those things and we'll be up by the Parker entrance. So if you come, make sure you come uh, through the front off a of wicker, come around the front of the sanctuary and then turn down to go to the Williams lobby. That way you can pass us if we don't have any major uh, traffic jams. But we will be there and we'll conduct that five minute charge conference outside. So if you show up at 11, you can be in person for the virtual charge conference. Uh, but it, it really will be quick and then we'll be right back to visiting folks, but we won't leave that spot. I also remind you about our podcast uh, that we are doing now with the Disciple Fast Track. If you're not able to subscribe to that or if you're having any issues with that, please reach out to me. You can call me, text me or email me and I can see if I can get those problems fixed for you. I believe we've released four. Uh, seven have been recorded. Uh, so more are coming and we'll do 12. Uh, for the which is the entire New Testament curriculum. Uh, so that's going to take us right up to the end of June, uh, which was good timing uh, for the Disciple Fast Track. Uh, but be, be listening to that. Uh, while it came out during COVID-19, that was actually a pre-COVID-19 plan. Uh, COVID-19 just made it happen faster, I guess. Uh, but if you have any issues with that or any problems or any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We uh, also want to say that uh, this week, our staff pastor parish relations committee had a virtual introductory uh, meeting visit with Eddie Hill and Marissa Copeland, who will be the new clergy leadership team. Uh, it went very, very well. And uh, we're just anticipating everything to continue moving, moving along uh, very well with, with that. And we do hope that we're able to get back into uh, into worship with you uh, very soon. I, I'm going to say a, 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 a quick prayer, and then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor William, who will lead us through a, through a time of more intense prayer. But would you pray with me? Grace God, you have given us this glorious day, and you have brought us together in this place of worship, Help us today and always to remember that it was by your wounds, not ours, that we are healed. Amen. Pastor Will. Jim, before you walk out, are there any pastoral prayers that we need to lift up before the body this morning? I, I think we need to know that Linda Stouffer died yesterday. Uh, thank you for that mm -hmm. reminder. Uh, she passed away. Uh, we got a message from Jody about that. So let's remember them in prayers. Um, Ron Perkinson uh, was sending some interesting messages as he's known to do on Facebook. So I think he's improving. Uh, and uh, of course we want to continue to lift uh, Harry Hatman, um, in our prayers, um, 
Jim Martell, and uh, any others that you all may be lifting now as Pastor William Leach. Thank you. Friends, as always, as our new way of doing things for now, uh, you're invited to use the comment section either here on Facebook or there on YouTube uh, to share your prayer concerns or your joys. Uh, and I do invite those as we see those uh, to be in prayer with those throughout the week. There'll be a time uh, in this prayer where I'll step out and Curtis will play uh, some meditation music. And that's what that time is sent for. So you can be in silent prayer and even with your eyes open and read the comments that come through uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. But for now, friends, we go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, some, sometimes the days and the weeks go by fast. And sometimes, sometimes it's the slowest process ever. Our anxiety is high. Our fear shakes us our worries and our concerns for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for everybody. Lord, it is overwhelming. Help us, O oh Lord, to hold fast to your truth. That it's by your wounds that we are healed, that we are saved. Lord, we pray for those who are battling this COVID-19. For the frontline first responding workers, doctors and nurses, EMS, fire, PD, who put their bodies, their health on the line. For all those who are continue to work to to give relief and help to others and are instead having to sacrifice time with their family for their safety. Lord, we lift them up in prayer. And we are so thankful for the call that you put on their life to serve others. Lord, we pray for this year church. For the people that are joining us virtually, Lord, we could we wish we could just be in the same place. But we will wait. We will wait patiently. We will wait patiently until it is safe to do so. Just as we wait patiently for you. pray for our conference, for the pastors that are looking at a move very soon, for Eddie and for Marissa who are coming here and for their families. Lord, we pray for the ministry that is at work and that will be at work through their time. And we give thanks for the ways in which you were at work in their lives and here in ours. Lord, you hear our prayers, whether we say them out loud, in our hearts, or even type them in a comment section. In this moment, O oh Lord, we lift our prayers to you.
We apologize for the glare. Uh, I think I hopefully have fixed it on Facebook. YouTube looks okay, uh, but Facebook hopefully is fixed now. If you're having issues, just drop a comment kind of in the next couple of seconds before Gene starts to preach. Uh, Gene's watching over me over here for the comments to see if I need to fix anything, but I want to make sure uh, that we're giving the best quality that we can. Uh, the Lord's light is shining ever so brightly this morning. Uh, but I believe it's better now. So I'll watch the comments as I read the scripture, uh, and then uh, I'll go over there and see if I can make any changes that are necessary. Our scripture this morning comes from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 18 through 25. I'll be reading from the NRSV version this morning. Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all deference. Not only to those who are kind and gentle, but also to those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ has also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judge, judges justly. 
He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and to the guardian of your souls. It is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now, O oh Lord, lead us in your truth, and in your truth set us free. Amen. Sometimes when we read the Bible our own way, we miss the main point of its holy and loving message because we are willing to trade a moment of self-gratification and credit for a lifetime of holiness. Sometimes when we read the Bible our own way, we refuse to accept the truth of how evil, injustice, and oppression makes us aware not of God, but of those who bully others to believe as they do, causing much pain and suffering. Sometimes when we read the Bible our own way, we try to tell the Bible what it is really saying because of our puffed up sense of importance. Rather than hear all of what it means to us. Over the years, I have been, I've always been fascinated with these words in 1 Peter 2, especially in chapter 2, verse 24, by his wounds, by his wounds, you have been healed. So today, I'm going to break a rule. In fact, I've already done it. Most of you wouldn't even know that the rule was broken and that I even led Pastor William to do it. And you all heard it. If you follow the lectionary closely and you read your Bible, then you already know that what Pastor William did was added an extra verse to the lectionary text. He began with 1 Peter 2.18 instead of what the lectionary says, 1 Peter 2.19. Now you, you might say, well, what, what difference does that make? I say, it depends on whether you begin the sermon just with the presence of unjust suffering or a specific example of it. Rational thinking people who read the Bible and who study the Bible are now nodding their heads in affirmation and beginning to wonder why verse 18 was not included by those who developed the lectionary for the church. By the end of this sermon, I hope you understand why I made the intentional mistake of inclusion. I begin with this story. Many years ago in Daytona Beach, Florida, a father was walking with his two daughters when the excited little children saw a set of swings on a playground. They asked their father if they could go and play on these swings. Their father wanted to say yes, but realized that the time had come for his daughters to begin to grow up and into a truth about the world that is not always innocent, not always loving, and not always kind. He told his daughters they could not play on the swings. Of course, the inquisitive little girls wanted to know why they could not play on the swings. Their father decided to get them home before he told them the truth. And when he got him home, this African-American father told his little girls this. It's against the law for us to use those swings, even though it is a public school. Only white children can play there. 
but it takes the state legislature, the courts, the sheriffs and policemen, the white churches, the mayors, the banks and businesses, and the whole state. It takes all these to keep two little black girls from swinging on those swings. Now listen to the first two verses of today's lesson. Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all deference, not only to those who are kind and gentle, but also to those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. It makes no sense to talk about unjust suffering if there is no point of reference for a man, woman, or child to trade a moment of self-gratification and credit for a lifetime of holiness. It makes no sense to talk about unjust suffering if there is no point of reference for a man, woman, or child to accept the truth of how evil, injustice, and oppression makes us aware of not only, not only of God, but also of those who bully others to believe as they do, causing much pain and suffering. It makes no sense to talk about unjust suffering if there's no point of reference for a man, woman, or child to hear not just part, but all of what the Bible has to say. And there is no other way to preach it. Consider those who continue to suffer evil, injustice, and oppression today. What about little children who are not allowed to play because the Skin color is not the right color. What about the lady that keeps calling on the church for financial help because she can't keep a job and she's already got one sick child and has just buried a seven-year-old and she depends on somebody else to take her to work to earn a paycheck and her place of work is 25 miles away. What about those children who are living in a home where yelling and screaming and beatings and abuse have become so routine, it is accepted as just the way things are supposed to be. What about the constant unrelenting energy that political leaders and protesters spend demeaning one another instead of finding a vaccine for COVID-19? What about the countless hours that healthcare workers, grocery store workers, first responders, law enforcement give to heal and keep us safe, often without so much as a smile, a nod, or a loving expression of appreciation? The African-American father whose two little girls wanted to play on those swings was the Reverend Howard Thurman mentor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Many years after that day with his daughters, a visitor came to see Reverend Thurman. They were talking about what the world needed, kind of like what we're doing right now. And Thurman interrupted the man and said these words, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs are people who have come alive. What makes you come alive? Nowhere in the Bible does it say children are to be denied joy and opportunity. Nowhere in the Bible does it say withholding generosity makes 
us come alive. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God approves of disrespect, abuse, and neglect of any man, woman, or child in any situation. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God approves of one position or leader because of their religious or political affiliations. Nowhere in the Bible does God say gratitude is to be discouraged. Everywhere in the Bible, especially in this Easter season, God comes to life through an intentional effort to say to all of us three words, I love you. How are we coming to life and saying, I love you back to God and to one another? Howard Thurman wisely noted what was preventing his children from being all that God set them and us up to be. Who else is being held back today by governments, courts, churches, economic systems, state and national policies? Sometimes we take out the mention of slavery, racism, and sexism, so the Bible's teeth will not bite us so hard. It makes it more palatable, we say. So today, we remember the evil, injustice, and oppression of slavery, and the need to come alive and do good, do no harm, and stay in love with God and one another. Let us remember that when Jesus went to the cross, it was to suffer and die for all of us so that we would follow him and not be so puffed up by our own sense of importance because disrespect, abuse, and neglect of any human being is not now nor ever will be acceptable in God's sight. Finally, Jesus said, I know my own and my own know me. But Jesus also said, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them too. Let us return to the shepherd and guardian of our souls and remember that it is by his wounds we are healed. It is biblical and it is called intentional inclusion and it helps us come alive now Go and do it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, our own sense of puffed up importance sometimes leads us away from hearing what your word is saying to us today. Speak to our hard hearts and our stiff necks. Speak to our hurts and our hopes. And in all of these, bring us to new life in Christ and send us forth today that we might love you and love one another in the precious name of the one who loved us first, Jesus Christ our Lord. To him 
be all honor and glory now and forever. Go in peace. Amen.